they and everybody is really out. extravagant and everybody judges everybody else based on that extravagance and it's a it's quite it's, an unhealthy little cycle we've got going on here it is unhealthy and it's vicious it's it's so vicious mm. really oh yeah. my god no that's it's crazy it is insane Lordium, a quiet suburb in Pretoria. The area is largely made up of wealthy to upper middle class Indian South African families. We spoke to a few of the younger residents to hear about their experiences growing up in the area. You grew up a certain way with being told you can't wear certain things or like you have to look a certain way, you know. And as you get older, like with me and her, we're not those same people anymore. So there's always this kind of torn between the two. You have to be fashionable. It's required if you want to make the cut in society. But you also have to, you know, you've got to touch base on everything. Like for example, the way I'm, and I fall victim to it because I just do. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm dressed in a way I can say I want to be dressed, but I also, there's like no skin showing. Because I work in a, under, um, a, like a lingerie store, a, a lot of the time we have to wear like what we sell, you know, to show like how you can wear it out. So it's body suits with, you know, skirts and like bralettes and things that are showing, you know, and that's the whole idea about it. I'm very comfortable with it because I found my balance between the two, but not a lot of people here are. So I always have like an extra jacket that I carry with me to cover up before. If I'm going out, if I'm going out with my mom afterwards or yeah. if I'm seeing some family afterwards. Before we go for a wedding, there is weeks in preparation. Most people from the high end uh, half of society have evening gowns made. Makeup is expensive, hair is expensive, and I kid you not, by the time you get to the function, it looks like you kind of crawled your way to it because of yeah. all the stages and all the admin and all the stress you've got to go through. Um, and the functions are used as uh, an indication of your status in society. So... And it's never as fun and... Exactly! As you know, it's not what it's actually about. I'm not saying we all have to agree with each other, that's impossible. Why can't we find a balance or um, a state of communication where we don't have to hide things or, you know? It's because it's, it's a painful process to constantly lie to my parents and then lie to myself. And we all have journeys to make, we all have, we all have things to go through. Mm -hmm. We need to make that comfortable and easy for, easier for each other. And things like fashion and modesty and, okay, it, it's, I'm not saying I'm not disregarding it entirely. I'm just saying it's not enough to create such big divides between us as a community. This I love. It's, it's so cute. It's really nice. It's a bit extra for like every day, kind of you know going out. But so I love wear it. it to a wedding or yeah, or like an event, like a fancy. Oh, it's very nice. And then traditional way we have like more. Um, um, traditional items. I can show you, like, this is, the, this is what I wore to my matric dinner. With, like, heels and a scarf. We had to wear a baya. Okay. Oh, so this is, this is an abaya. Yeah. A very pretty yeah. beaded. It's really nice. It's very, very nice. So you wore it with a hijab. This is so pretty. My first cousin, yeah. It's really pretty. So then, but like this is the fanciest I've ever dressed for a wedding, yeah. you know. Um, if it's like a really close family, you wear something like you have to look really, really nice because it's your family. And it's close show, family and to, yeah. To show that your family as a whole is on yeah. a certain side of, of the yeah. world. Oh, you have bright pink ducks. They don't fit me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sad. These are I know so they're cool. like they're too tiny. They're too small for me. Oh wow! But they're so cute. So this is like your you like being colorful. Oh, and she yes. says neon heels. <laughs> I have neon heels. I have pink heels. <laughs> I have black. These two, I wear a lot because it's this is very like it's old but it's like really classic. Yeah. It so it goes with like a lot of what I wear. 
this I think is the most expensive thing I've ever owned. <laughs> it's Aldo boots. It oh like yeah, definitely. Almost two grand <laughs> for these boots. Wow. But they're so nice. They are really nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. school and learning it's quite, it's quite an identity crisis to be honest. And a lot of people that, that are trying to rebel from what their parents told them to wear or do and be something they weren't. And so there's a lot of pressure on me as well to, to, to dress like them and talk like them and be like them and do the things that they do. Um, but I was always the outlier so I tried not to conform. Um, but that never worked out very well. There were also those those moments growing up when you were, I think that American mm. um, like kind of gangster style, mm, which comes exactly. actually from an old school toppy gangster kind of mm. style, you know, filtered down to the youth, and then it became influenced by things like FUBU. I remember that yeah, growing yeah. up, and, you know, <laughs> for me being Muslim, like Eid is obviously a big dress up day. Yeah. And that day is completely westernized okay. and Americanized and mm. labeled, you know, like about brands and like diesel and gas and all mm. this like stuff, which I don't really conform to in my life now. Mm. But growing up, there was those kinds of um, expectations. Mm. And I think it has a lot to do with like wealth and, you know, mm. that um, expression of wealth and, and having arrived. The first few houses that came here were like in the 50s, probably, mm -hmm. about these 50s. So it's a completely new struggle that people went through to be forced in this area um, and to differentiate from each other, they were forced to do something different. Mm. Even if it didn't feel like it was them, mm. they just felt the need to be different. I've never made chat before. It was a way of finding our identity as well, mm. as, as people, as South Africans. So as much as there was a struggle, and I agree with you, and now we're in a position where we would like to wear our cultural mm -hmm. clothes, I think at that point, growing up, it was like finding your way as well, like, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. who am I? So I grew up around with music, my sisters played the piano, and uh, my grandfather was very into music, and my, my dad as well. But the, 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 pressure, the economic pressures that we're talking about kind of forced them to feel quite insecure about music and being a musician as a profession. Mm. So I didn't get the support to go and do that and being a, like the only son in, in the family you feel a lot of expectation to, to kind of satisfy your parents and to not rebel against them. We always look for people that are similar to us. Um, mm. We don't like being thrown out of a comfort zone. Well, sometimes we push ourselves, but, but this was just a natural connection. Um, and that's why music speaks a lot about that as well. Um, about how our, our origins have tried to define us and we've tried to go against that um, and create something different that, that isn't boxed in any specific genre. Um, we, I mean, there's so many things that divide us these days. I mean, it's race, gender your choice of tea or coffee, cat or dog, I mean, there's, people want to be defined by a box. What I wear gives me enough confidence to be who I am, um, but it, it should in no way mask my insecurities either, mm. you know, because I need those insecurities to make honest music. Mm. Try not to wear stuff like this when you're small because it's so shiny and blingy. <laughs> It's, it's almost like a feminine kind of thing. Is it? No, it, it's purely a male outfit, but I mean, it's, it's so shiny that it's almost, it's almost feminine. not masculine anymore. So usually, what would be considered more masculine? Like a plain, yeah, something white, simple. plain um, color? But is that, is that a Eastern standard or a Western standard that you're thinking of? What do you mean? That's blingy, it's for more... Yeah, it's for more, more feminine. Because if you look in India, yeah, yeah. men wear blingy, that's it. Yeah, exactly. It's for us, it's not. So, in, yeah, keeping in line with the Western standard, we would avoid wearing stuff like that. Oh, Because okay. it was so shiny. 
So this, so this is when you're fighting the identity crisis. Yeah, right now. <laughs> it's like a good moment, right? Like, like satisfy your parents, don't wear that. Yeah. Mm. And then a shirt, like from the first Island Woolworths. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure Shayla shares this one as well. We're trying to get in and run out in five minutes. And pants. Uh, pants would be something along these lines. So like suit pants, almost. Oh, proper tailored. These are these are literally from. <laughs> <laughs> in the environment we work in, it's not common to wear a tie. Thank oh. God. Um, <laughs> so we're not super formal. I mean, people still would wear chinos or something. Yeah. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it's. Uh, it's. I don't mind wearing it. It's not too bad. And this is just you on a regular day. Yeah. Something not distracting. And you guys, is it similar breakdown between the worlds? I think you may be a bit more relaxed. No, I've I've got one more rule basically, because um, I was I was at a more corporate space before, um, but I'm not. Uh, so as a, as a lecturer, like I feel like the more honest I am about what I'm wearing, the better. You know, the better. Mm -hmm. um, people know who they're dealing with. From a very young age, I have actually been, um, if when I say very young, probably from six years old. I've been into Bollywood dancing ever since then. I have travelled to India, I've had um, instructors from India coming through to South Africa. So it is my passion and it's something I wanted to follow through to the youth. Um, this is the reason why I've got the dance company, because it's an opportunity I never had within our community. I would say when we were growing up, it, it used to be you need to be fully clothed all the time. Um, it's not correct for young girls to be wearing basically short skirts and anything that's revealing that that type of um, stereotype, if we could call it that. But I think as you grow up and you mature as a woman, you actually realize, okay, it's your own body. You can, you're allowed to do what you want to do with of course still being respectful to yourself. I'm gonna say Lodium is pretty branded if um, I have to, I mean if you walk around you'll see um, everyone is in branded clothing. But then again, I think today you can pretty much get everything fake as well, because <laughs> if you're gonna go to China Mall you get that on. So you can't actually differentiate and say, hey that guy's wearing a branded one and that guy's wearing a fake one or whatever. In my personal fashion when it comes to uh, for example, at work, I'm not a very colourful person, yet if you see me on stage, it's a totally different person. So you'll get all the colours that you could get, obviously because it's stage. However, when you get me at work, it's always black, or white or blue. It just happens. <laughs> so right now it's winter, so I've just taken out a few of the winter winter stuff. Uh, stress. The stress. Okay. So... It was a very professional. This is the professional side of me, uh, where you'll find me going to the meetings and stuff like that. I'm a big fan of uh, pencil skirts, so so it's not hang too well at the moment. But yeah, um, I think this is one of my favorites. Where you'll always find these me in this most of the time. And then yeah, so, yeah. you the coat out of all of these that you wear the most. Um. A bit common, but yes, it's a classic. It's a staple. <laughs> it's a staple piece. So yeah, this it's is the so cut that I'm cool. always in. This is more for the pure Bollywood style of dancing. So once again, you have your thread work, your stone work to give that extra shine on stage, and you get a bit of velvet work at the bottom. So yeah, Ooh. and the reason why you get them so wide as well is that you probably seen in Bollywood movies when they spin. Yeah, these skirts definitely do flare up. These are specifically the stuff that we wear to weddings, MC functions. Um, yeah, basically when we compare functions, something that we wear at weddings most of the time. Um, what I love about this is modern yet traditional. So the thread work over here is the traditional, which we call zardosi, um, and then you have your silk work as well. So it has the very much Indianness to it, as well as the Western style. Um, same with this one. Um, they both uh, got the Zirdosi thread work and the silk on the back as well as the lace. And then your scarf that goes with it, which you can drape however you want to.
Podium is a community richer in tradition, culture, religion, and finances than many others in South Africa, but highlights a factor we often ignore in fashion, how our upbringing plays a huge factor in how we will present ourselves as we grow older. Mm-hmm.